live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. Welcome back to the mighty banks of the River Thames down at the Docklands in London. This is theCUBE, we're live here at HPE Discover 2016. Chris Kozup is here as the Vice President of Marketing at HPE Aruba. Chris, good to see you again. Yeah, great to be here. So good, the keynote this afternoon was all Aruba all the time. You know, I know you had your hand in that, so congratulations. Absolutely. thank you. Came across great, crisp story. I think the audience liked it, they stayed. The place was packed. Yeah, yeah, you know, people really two, engaged. Sometimes you lose people, but you know, they were there for the duration, mm -hmm. so congratulations. Thank you. So, thank you. take us through sort of the highlights of the keynotes and then we'll get into it. Yeah, well, so today was really about uh, talking about uh, the intelligent edge. And, and obviously for HPE, we have a rich history of, of hybrid IT, right? And we talked about that extensively yesterday. But ultimately, it's about how do we extend that out into the edge. Uh, so the new focus for, uh, for HPE is really all about the intelligence at the edge. And you know, the way that we define this is ultimately around this concept of convergence of people, places, and things, right? So a lot of people, a lot of things now coming onto the network with IoT, and of course the place where, where they are, right? And ultimately for us it's about how do we capture insights from the convergence of people, places, and things, and then use those insights to abstract information and context that's relevant to transform experiences. Because at the end of the day, information or insights doesn't do us any good unless we can do something with it. So that's really our whole push around the intelligent edge is, is people, places, and things, insights, and then transforming experiences. And that's what now, today's keynote was about. Now from the Aruba perspective, what new products, what new technologies are you developing to, to enhance this, this goal? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, our mandate, I would say, for the company is, is a number of things. First of all, it's extensive connectivity, right? So we start at the foundation around how do we connect, whether it be wirelessly or wired, right? Uh, or in many cases, extend connectivity over third-party networks as well. Think of like emerging IoT networks like LoRa, uh, or think of LTE or cellular networks. Uh, and once we have that extensive connectivity set, um, robust, secure, reliable, it then all becomes about the software. And at the heart of things, HPE Aruba is really a software-defined company. I mean, we think about this as you know, the software layer that essentially can be modified, changed, opened up to a broad base of ecosystem partners to then deliver apps and services. So I've got my little list I was talking to you before about. Let's try to make it real and sort of help people understand what we're talking about sure. here. Uh, indoor navigation is, is something we've been talking about. People don't want to know, hey, where's the cube? And you, yeah. Boom, there it is. Yeah. Uh, tracking of assets, employee tracking, proximity services, you want to give somebody an offer when That's they're right. you know, yeah. coming by a certain you know, retail you know, operation. Keyless access, these are just you know, four or five of the ones that I've been picking out over yeah. the last couple of days, and there are many more. Yeah. So talk about how organizations are applying these yeah. uh, attributes and how it's changing their workplace. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the workplace used to be just about driving employee productivity, right? You come into your, 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 your space, you work from nine to five, and then you leave, right? Increasingly now with the power of location, right, which is the service that's essentially at the foundation of all of this, we can now start to personalize your experience. Right? So the whole concept of wayfinding, getting from point A to point B, is personal to you. right? That's your wayfinding, that, that's your directions that you're, you're engaged. The idea of promotional push notifications uh, or, or zone-based marketing, for example, is personalized to you, again, based on your location. So what HPE Aruba provides is the infrastructure and the apps and software that makes that possible, right? So it starts with the concept of Bluetooth, BLE beacons, allowing us to get that real accurate uh, location capabilities. But then ultimately the, the intelligence and logic behind this is really through uh, an open-based software platform that works with the broad base of partners. So let me give you an example. So we work with a, uh, a partner called Robin, right? And, and think about Robin as, in many respects, the Uber experience of conference rooms, right? When, when you want to go to the, and, and get an Uber, you pull up your, your smartphone, you pull up the app, and you find a car that's closest to you, uh, and that then guides you through, and you, you, know, you get the car and off you go. The same with Robin provides that uh, app experience within the facility, within the workplace, that allows you then to see and locate conference rooms that are near you. Now we take it a step further, once you enter the conference room, we know your presence because we know your location. So we have the ability then to change the, the, the reservation of that conference room to make it now booked and, and it's yours. 
and take that even a step further to actually kickstart the collaboration experience with Skype for Business or other collaborative apps that now connecting all the people that you had predefined as being part of that experience, right? So this is kind of the example of workplace experience and transforming that workplace environment based on the idea now that I have this personalized information about you, your user identity, where you are, the app that you're using, pulling that all together. Again, I mentioned people, places, and things, and you can start to see that's a real tangible example of Let's that. Let's talk competition. Now, you're up against the Gorilla, uh, Cisco, and uh, I'm sure in just about every uh, sales situation. Sure. What is your yeah. What is your distinguishing, what are your distinguishing features? Yeah, uh, the biggest one, and very simple, is uh, you can come to HPE and get a single end-to-end -end solution. And what that means is, you can start uh, really with a single architecture, right? So start from one access point. If you're a very small business or if you're just doing a proof of concept, you could start with a single access point and then grow that over time up to thousands of access points, all with the same system, the same management structure. Uh, what you'd find with the, uh, the gorilla down the road is effectively multiple different architectures that actually are not interoperable one to the other. So you may actually, as a smaller company or in a branch environment, have deployed one system, and then you're stuck when you need to integrate that with a larger campus environment or try to upgrade that as well. With HPE Aruba, it's a single seamless uh, infrastructure. The other point I will say is, we fundamentally believe in openness uh, here. And, and I've already kind of alluded to this idea of open APIs, but you know, the, the, the power and the speed of innovation should be at the speed of the ecosystem not at the speed of one single vendor. And so this is a key defining differentiator for HPE Aruba, is the openness, the open APIs, working with the broader ecosystem, whereas, again, down the road, you'll find much more of a focus on end-to-end -end closed systems as opposed to that open I want to be structure. sure I understand what you mean by openness. Now, does yeah. that mean you are adopting open standards wherever possible, or that you are, are publishing your APIs? Yeah, so both, actually. So we are always predisposed to adopting standards, and, and actually, we drive much of the standards uh, process in general, right, as it relates to infrastructure standards and software standards. But in this specific case, because we're talking much more about software defined as kind of the key, uh, the key point that most customers are focused on, the APIs are really that key differentiator, and then the ecosystem of partners that we bring into that uh, environment as well. Does, does software defined ultimately make the hardware uh, a non-issue? Um, not entirely, no, because there is a lot that we do in hardware, especially when you're talking about connectivity that's very important, right? So take for an example, an access point. You could go and you could buy a consumer grade AP for $30 off the shelf uh, and bring that into an enterprise environment, but the second that that microwave oven turns on and it emits radiation and, and, and interference in that environment, your whole network is gone, even if you're running a little bit thin layer of software on top of that, right? So we invest a lot in R&D in that hardware side for things like radio optimization and RF propagation, right? That is so critical. Uh, and that extends really from all of our access points into our switching infrastructure. Uh, but then ultimately, I, I will say it is true that we want to abstract much of that complexity from the view of the customer so that ultimately the infrastructure is there, it's functional, it delivers all uh, that it needs to, and then really it's just programmable to adapt to the changes that that customer has. Chris, you were talking before about op openness um, versus sort of closed, uh, proprietary, you know, whatever terms we use. Openness has a flip side, which is choice means a lot of choices, a lot yeah. of complexity, a lot yeah. of permutation. How are you addressing that? Yeah. I think, uh, first of all, we have a very, very strong focus on industry segments, right? And addressing kind of, um, you know, who uh, are the key customers that are really working with us. And I would say that that heritage of vertical focus comes uh, actually really out of the wireless business. Because if you think about how wireless started, you know, it was in the inventory management uh, sector in retail, or it was in the distribution sectors with, with barcode scanners, mm -hmm. right? So, already wireless emerges from a very kind of vertically kind of focused environment. So that, that kind of heritage moves up into the present time where you know, when we're talking about uh, you know, asset tracking in hospitals, right? that's a very industry specific type of, of use case. So we spend a lot of time uh, articulating use case and solutions, documenting those solutions, working with our ecosystem of value added resellers and distributors to make sure that as they go to market, they're not just taking a product, or they're not just taking a, a piece of software, they're taking a actual documented, defined solution and representing that to the customer as something that can solve their problems. Okay, we talked about workplace transformation. Let's talk about brands. So, you know, we talk about 
digital transformation yeah. a lot at these events. And it seems as though a lot of the brands have sort of are trying to get back some of the advantage that they used to have. Yeah. Right? The brands used to have all the information about pricing and competition, and yeah. the web changed that, obviously. And, and now the consumer has the advantage. Yeah. And it feels like the early days of mobile were all about the brands trying to collect some information, not really putting the customers first. Mm -hmm. And I think brands are starting to realize, wow, we yeah. have to actually put the customers first. You seem to be at the center of that. Mm -hmm. How are brands taking advantage of your capabilities to really deliver value and obviously help themselves. Yeah, yeah. This is this is a really rich kind of topic here on, on this one. So if you think about, let's take retail as kind of a, a first stop of, of brand discussion, right? So you saw this shift in the retail industry from brick and mortar to digital, right? Everybody raced to e-commerce and to go digital. The interesting thing is now that most uh, or, or many kind of smart retailers are realizing it's actually about how you bridge the physical with the digital. And let me let me kind of explain this. So. Uh, the power of Wi-Fi in an on-premise environment allows us actually to understand who has come into our, our venue and actually where they have gone. Uh, we have a large uh, uh, retail mall uh, customer that 50% um, of their interactions with their customer actually happened over Wi-Fi based on the fact that that customer had downloaded one of their apps or, or their app, their shopping app, Every time that customer came into the into the shopping center, they could identify the time when they entered, when they uh, left, and actually where that customer went. And then map that back to actually their digital presence. And, and so one example was, customer came in, went actually to the hair salon, went back at home that night, Googled or, or searched on their, on their shopping center website, found a different hair salon, and then two days later went back to that different hair salon. What do you conclude? Customer was unhappy with their first experience, right? So here you see an example of how this brand can actually capture digital information with physical information, blend that, get a much richer profile of that uh, customer, ultimately then delivering much more value and engendering more loyalty. Now using that example you just gave, where where does Aruba sit in that? Are you are you span the, that whole realm of that application? So we, we play predominantly in the presence uh, in, in the physical environment, right? And um, uh, so the, what we provide through an analytics capability, so an analytics engine, is the ability for our customers to track through Wi-Fi that connectivity experience and to aggregate that, right? So nobody's nobody's personal data is ever compromised or delivered, it's viewed in an aggregate uh, that we can then pass on uh, to the retailer in this case, right? So we provide that, that physical connectivity and the analytics that go behind that. Okay, the well, third layer is operational, right? Mm -hmm. So the stuff that maybe not everybody sees and touches. So yep. how are you affecting that? I mean, obviously IOT plays into that. Very but, much so. But let's, let's unpack that a bit. Yeah, so this, this is a, um, as you say, it's a kind of an area, it's a bit more in the, the back office uh, from the consumer side, but um, the key thing that's happening in this environment is really a convergence of what we call IT and OT, or mm -hmm. operational technology. And you know, uh, think of OT as what's happening on the shop floor, uh, what's happening in an oil rig or a gas environment, or you know, all of these very kind of uh, operationally centric environments, industrial centric environments. And the reality is, uh, there have been things that have existed in those environments for decades, right? You know, the technology is not new in, in that environment. What's new is this convergence with IT, and the fact that by adding sensors or temperature gauges uh, or um, you know thermometers or you know what all of these various kind of um, sensor capabilities, we can actually bring in more diagnostics about what's happening in that operational environment. So let's take kind of um, actually what was demonstrated on the uh, in the keynote today uh, around an actual production flow where we can detect anomalies and actually predict that there's about to be an outage based on sensors that are now in that production flow feeding back data into, into the network. And what's unique about HPE is our ability actually to leverage the heritage of strong compute and storage uh, from a data center perspective and extend that to the edge through a new product uh, uh, portfolio called Edgeline uh, as a new, uh, new solution set. So that when all of that data is being generated in real time, out at the edge, this production flow, we can process it without the need to backhaul to a central data center or to a cloud environment somewhere. So here you have the idea of sensors and things being connected through a, a network, process that data with analytics and compute power right at the edge to make sure that we have some sort of outcome then that can avoid potential downtime or problems. What about uh, the, the power issue? As you get more and more things connected, a lot of th these devices will be small, uh, it's not going to be practical to connect them to yeah. the, uh, 
uh, to a power source. Is that an area that you're working to solve I'm, as well? I'm happy you brought this up because just today we introduced a new product uh, that's actually an IoT ready switch that incorporates power directly into the switch that senses the thing that is on the other side and can actually tailor down or tailor up the power based on that, that uh, what the thing needs, right? So if you have a, you know, a temperature gauge is going to draw much less power than say an IP phone will, for example. Right. So the last thing that you want to do throughout all your switch infrastructure is blast a whole bunch of power that's not being used. And clearly today, most companies are very concerned with their green initiatives. And so this gives us a way to scale the power budget much more effectively, because as you say, all of these new things coming into this environment. So this is our, our new uh, 2540 switch that was actually just launched today. What are you seeing in terms of the organizational issues around IT and OT? Yeah. Now, IT and OT probably don't talk that much. What are some of the best practices that you guys are seeing and are recommending? Yeah, this is, this is also a, a, a big one, and here you have two domains that really traditionally have existed apart and now are being brought together. And um, so I think that this is definitely, um, uh, it's an area where you know, we're, we're learning as we go through, right? And a lot of our uh, approach to market is actually to work with the operational technology suppliers, uh, companies like PTC. Uh, companies like OSI Soft, companies like National Instruments, because these companies have been working in the OT domain for years, right? And they understand those buyers, they have the trust and confidence of the OT individual. Uh, but ultimately, working with those uh, partners, bringing in our own capabilities around edge compute and networking, packaging that up as a solution and going to market together allows us to break down some of those silos, right? If we are able to break that, uh, those silos down from a technology perspective, ultimately that makes it easier for the two constituents to come together on, on the customer side. So what's the sequence? You connect them, you instrument them, you secure them, and then, then you take and action. Then, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's about yeah. un unleashing all the insights and, and uh, you know, obviously, the business does need to have some uh, understanding about what it's trying to accomplish, right? Because as you start to connect all these things, the, the possibilities start to become greater and greater. And you know, this is really where HPE strength uh, within our technical services capability comes to bear, right? So uh, we offer a breadth of, of consulting and, and planning services around IoT that allow us to help guide the customer through some of that exploration and also some of the pitfalls that we've seen with other customers. So, mm -hmm equally as important as technology is the services element. I have to ask you this, we're, tw we're 20 years into consumer grade Wi-Fi, widespread adoption of Wi-Fi. In my experience, in most of the hotels and coffee shops that I use, the quality of Wi-Fi is still terrible. Why is that? Because they're not using HPE or Rubik. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too oh, easy. Answer. Talk about <laughs> a soft answer, right? from the journalist, my goodness. <laughs> is there, uh, is there a, 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 are, are there certain <laughs> structural barriers that are just really hard to overcome? So I think this, this comes back to the discussion that uh, you're asking me around hardware, right? And, and kind of, so, um, you know, if, if companies or venues go out, uh, Wi-Fi is not all created equal, right? And, and that, that is, is very much the case. So, there is a lot to be said about the intelligence that goes into the radios in terms of how signals propagate, the ability to detect uh, interference and to mitigate around that, uh, a lot of the automation there. Those are our enter enterprise class features. And uh, when companies go out and they buy consumer grade products off the shelf that are designed for a home, not designed for a whole bunch of people coming into a venue or a facility and changing environments and things going on and off, that is the challenge that, that, that we see. But I will say, we've seen uh, definitely the quality of experience for Wi-Fi grow by leaps and bounds relative to how it has been. I don't think you could imagine today going into a hotel and not having Wi-Fi connectivity. And it's not your Wi-Fi at this venue, is that correct? We're working on that, it's true, it is not. Okay, good. <laughs> Wi-Fi's not so great here, so I'm glad to hear it's not Aruba. But uh, as we were saying, we've done an event at Levi Stadium, the Wi-Fi was amazing. Yeah. So. We know that's a reference account of yours. And Absolutely. Good deal. All right, Chris, well, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank we you, guys. Always it. a pleasure. All right, good deal. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Uh, Paul and I will be right back after this short break. This is HPE Discover, live from London.